Book 37, C, Manifestation of Buddha, Continued, See when the water spirit ocean wants to manifest the controlling power of the water spirit for the benefit of sentient beings to make them happy, it raises a great network of clouds from the earth to the heaven of control of others' emanations, covering all over, those clouds are of infinite different colors, some are the color of golden light, some are the color of lapis lazuli light, some are the color of silver light, some are the color of crystal light, some are the color of emerald light, some are the color of agate light, some are the color of red pearl light, some are the color of light of infinite fragrances, some are the color of light of spotless cloth, some are the color of light of pure water, some are the color of light of various ornaments. This network of clouds, having spread all over, emits lightning of various colors, the golden clouds emit lapis lazuli lightning, the lapis lazuli clouds emit golden lightning, the silver clouds emit crystal lightning, the crystal clouds emit silver lightning, the emerald clouds emit agate lightning, the agate clouds emit emerald lightning, the infinite fragrance colored clouds emit spotless cloth. Colored lightning, the spotless cloth colored clouds emit infinite fragrance colored lightning, the pure water colored clouds emit various ornament colored lightning. The various ornament colored clouds emit pure water colored lightning, multicolored clouds emit one colored lightning. One colored clouds emit multicolored lightning. There also issue from the clouds various sounds of thunder, according to the minds of sentient beings, making them all happy, sounds like goddesses singing, like celestial musicians playing, like water nymphs singing, like Gondor girls singing, like canary girls singing, like earthquakes like the waves and tide of the ocean, like the king of beasts howling, like beautiful birds calling, as well as innumerable other kinds of sounds. When the thunder has sounded, there arises a cool breeze, delighting the mind of sentient beings. Finally it rains, various kinds of rain, benefiting and comforting infinite beings. In all places from the heavens to earth the rain is different, on the ocean it rains clear, cool water called endless, in the heaven of control of others' emanations it rains various music such as pipes and flutes, named beautiful, in the heaven of enjoyment of emanation it rains jewels called radiating great light, in the heaven of happiness it rains great ornaments, called hanging crests, in the heaven of timely portion it rains large, beautiful flowers, called various adornments, in the thirty-three fold heaven it rains many sublime fragrances, called pleasing, in the heaven of the four world guardians it rains precious celestial robes, called covering, in the palace of water spirits it rains red pearls, called flowing light, in the palace of the titans it rains weapons, called conquering enemies, in the northern region of earth it rains various flowers, called blooming, in the other regions of earth it also rains differently according to the place. Though the mind of the water spirit is impartial, without discrimination, simply because the roots of goodness of sentient beings are different, the rain has distinctions. Similarly, when Buddha, the truly enlightened, the supreme spiritual sovereign, wants to edify sentient beings with right teaching, first he spreads clouds of embodiments over the cosmos, appearing differently according to inclinations of beings. For some beings he manifests clouds of mortal bodies, for some, clouds of emanated bodies, for some, clouds of power bodies, for some, clouds of form bodies, for some, clouds of glorified bodies, for some, clouds of virtue bodies, for some, clouds of knowledge bodies, for some, clouds of bodies whose powers do not deteriorate, for some, clouds of bodies of fearlessness, for some, clouds of cosmic bodies. Buddha covers all worlds with infinite such body clouds and manifests various kinds of lightning in accord with the individual differences in inclinations of sentient beings, for some beings he manifests lightning called reaching everywhere, for some, lightning called boundless light, for some, lightning called penetrating the secret teaching of Buddha, for some, lightning called reflected light, for some, lightning called illumination, for some, lightning called entering the door of endless mental command, for some, lightning called right mindfulness undisturbed, for some, lightning called ultimately incorruptible, 
for some, lightning called. Adaptively entering all states of being, for some, lightning called fulfilling all wishes and making everyone happy. Having manifested lightnings of infinite such lights, Buddha then produces infinite thunders of concentration, according to the inclinations of sentient beings, the thunder of the concentration of well-aware knowledge, the thunder of the concentration of the refulgent, undefiled ocean, the thunder of the concentration of mastery of all the teachings, the thunder of the adamantine will concentration, the thunder of the concentration symbolized by the polar mountain, the thunder of the ocean. Seal concentration, the thunder of the solar lamp concentration, the thunder of the inexhaustible treasury concentration, the thunder of the concentration of the indestructible power of liberation. After the thunder of infinite different concentrations such as these have emerged from the clouds of embodiments of Buddha, when about to shower the rain of truth, first he manifests an auspicious sign to awaken sentient beings, from the mind of unhindered compassion he manifests the atmosphere of great knowledge of Buddha, called able to cause all sentient beings to develop inconceivable happiness and well-being. Once this sign has appeared, the bodies and minds of all enlightening beings and sentient beings become clear and cool. After that, from the cloud of the great reality body of Buddha, the cloud of great compassion, the cloud of great inconceivability, showers the inconceivable, far flung rain of teaching, causing all beings' bodies and minds to be pure, for enlightening beings sitting at the site of enlightenment there showers a great rain of teaching called non-differentiation of the realm of reality, for enlightening beings in their final embodiment there showers a great rain of teaching called enlightening beings easy mastery of the esoteric teaching of Buddha, for enlightening beings to become fully enlightened in the next life there showers a great rain of teaching. Called pure universal light, for coronate enlightening beings there showers a great rain of teaching called adornment by the embellishments of Buddhahood, for enlightening beings who have attained tolerance there showers a great rain of teaching called flowers of knowledge with jewels. Of virtue blooming, not ceasing the compassionate practices of enlightening beings, for enlightening beings in progress there showers a great rain of teaching called entering the profound method of manifestation of occult transformations and carrying on enlightening practice without stopping or wearying, for newly inspired enlightening beings there showers a great rain of teaching called producing the practice of great love and compassion of Buddhas to save sentient beings, for those who seek. The vehicle of individual enlightenment there showers a great rain of teaching called deeply knowing the principles of conditional origination, avoiding extremes, and attaining the non-decaying fruit of liberation, for those who seek the vehicle of listeners there showers a great rain of teaching called cutting down all obstructing afflictions with the sword of great knowledge and wisdom, for stabilized and unstabilized sentient beings who accumulate roots of goodness there showers a great rain of teaching called facilitating the accomplishment of various ways into the teaching, producing great happiness. The Buddha showers great rains of teaching like these in accordance with the mentalities of sentient beings, filling all worlds. A Buddha, perfectly enlightened, is impartial in mind and does not begrudge the teaching, simply because the faculties and inclinations of sentient beings are not the same, the reins of teaching appear differently. This is the tenth characteristic of the voice of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. The voice of Buddha has ten kinds of infinity, it is as infinite as the realm of space because it extends to all places, it is as infinite as the cosmos because it pervades everywhere, it is as infinite as the realm of sentient beings because it gladdens all hearts, it is as infinite as all acts because it explains their results and consequences, it is as infinite as afflictions because it removes them all, it is as infinite as the speech of sentient beings because it enables them to hear. According to their understanding, it is as infinite as the inclinations and understandings of sentient beings because it observes them all to rescue and liberate them, it is as infinite as past, present, and future because it has no boundaries, it is as infinite as knowledge because it distinguishes everything, it is as infinite as the realm of Buddhahood because it enters the cosmos of reality of Buddhahood. The voice of Buddha, the completely enlightened, comprises incalculable infinities such as these, great enlightening beings should know it thus. Then the enlightening being universally good, to again clarify what he meant, spoke these verses.
when a billion world universe is about to dissolve. The power of being's virtue announces that. The four meditations are peaceful and painless. Causing them to leave desire when they have heard. Ten powered Buddha, also like this. Produces a sublime voice pervading the cosmos. Explaining that conditioned states are painful and impermanent. So beings may cross for good the sea of birth and death. Just as a canyon deep in the mountains echoes any sound. And though it accords with others' voices. The echo has no discrimination. So also is the speech of Buddha revealed according to the maturity of faculties. Causing them to be controlled and happy. Yet without self-consciousness of preaching. As the celestial drum called awakener vibrates with the sound of the law in the sky. Admonishing the self-indulgent celestials. Causing them to give up attachments when they hear. So too is the drum of Buddha's teaching like this. Producing various wonderful sounds awakening all living beings so they all realize. Enlightenment. The Lord God has a precious concubine who voices all kinds of music producing a hundred thousand sounds in one. Voice with a hundred thousand tones in each sound. The voice of Buddha is also like this. Producing all tones in one voice, different. According to beings characters and inclinations. Causing each to end afflictions when they hear. Just as King Brahma utters a sound which. Makes all Brahmas happy. The voice reaching only Brahmas, no one else. Each thinking he alone hears it. So also does the Buddha utter a word which. Fills the cosmos. Yet only reaches the faithful because the faithless cannot receive it. Just as all waters are of one and the same essence. With no difference in flavor. But the land they are on and the vessels they are in are not the same. So that causes them to be variously different. The voice of omniscience is similar to this. The essence of truth has one flavor, undifferentiated. Yet according to beings actions, which are not the same. It causes them to hear in various different ways. When the water spirit heatless showers rain to moisten the land. Causing plants and trees to grow. The rain does not come from its body or mind. Likewise the wondrous voice of Buddhas. Rains throughout the cosmos, filling all. Fostering good and extinguishing evil. But not coming from inside or outside. Just as the water spirit. Thoughtful raises clouds for seven days. Before raining, waiting for all people to finish their work. And then showering rain for their benefit. The teaching of Buddha is likewise. First civilizing beings and developing them. And afterward expounding the profound truth. So the hearers will not be frightened. The water spirit great adornment in the ocean showers ten arrays of rain. Or a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand. Though the water is one flavor, the arrays are different. The ultimate teacher likewise explains ten or twenty teachings. Or a hundred, a thousand, up to infinity. Without any notion of difference. The supreme water spirit ocean covers the earth with clouds, the rain in each place is different but the spirit has no thought of distinction. Likewise Buddha, sovereign of truth, extends clouds of great compassion in all directions. Raining differently for each practitioner, yet without discriminating among them. How should great enlightening beings know the mind of Buddha, the truly awake? The mind, intellect, and consciousness of Buddha are ungraspable. One can know the mind of Buddha only in terms of the infinity of knowledge. Just as space is the resting place of all things, while space has no resting place, so also is the knowledge of Buddha the resting place of all mundane and transcendental knowledge, while the knowledge of Buddha has no resting place. This is the first characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. Just as the realm of truth always produces the liberations of Buddhist followers, individual illuminates, and enlightening beings, while the realm of truth has no increase or decrease, in the same way the knowledge of Buddha always produces all kinds of worldly and transmundane knowledge without itself increasing or decreasing. 
This is the second characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. Just as the ocean water flows under the continents and islands, so that all who drill for water find it, yet the ocean does not form any notion of itself giving out water, in the same way the water of the ocean of knowledge of Buddha flows into the minds of all sentient beings, so that if they examine things and practice ways of entering truth they will find knowledge, pure and clear, with lucid understanding, yet the knowledge of Buddha is equal, non-dual, without discrimination, but, according to the differences in sentient beings' mental patterns, the knowledge they obtain is not the same. This is the third characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. In the ocean there are four jewels imbued with infinite qualities that produce all the precious jewels in the ocean, if these jewels were not in the ocean, it would be impossible to find even one jewel. What are these four? One is called accumulation of treasures, another is called inexhaustible treasury, another is called removal of burning heat, the other is called replete with adornments. These jewels cannot be seen by any ordinary people or sea creatures. Why? The King Water Spirit Ocean, because the jewels are magnificent with perfect lines and proportions, keeps them in a deeply hidden place within the palace. The Great Ocean of Knowledge of Buddha Similarly has four great jewels of knowledge, with infinite qualities of knowledge and virtue, whereby are produced all the jewels of knowledge of the stages of learning and beyond learning of ordinary people, Buddhist followers and individual illuminates, and of enlightening beings. What are the four? They are the jewel of great knowledge of unattached skill in means, the jewel of great knowledge of skillfully distinguishing the conditioned and the unconditioned, the jewel of great knowledge analytically explaining countless things without violating the essential nature of things, and the jewel of great knowledge knowing appropriate and inappropriate timing without ever amiss. If these four jewels were not in the Buddha's ocean of knowledge, not a single being would ever be able to enter the great vehicle of liberation. These four jewels of knowledge cannot be seen by unworthy beings. Why? Because they are kept in the deeply secret treasury of Buddha. These four jewels of knowledge are even, symmetrical, straight and true, immaculately beautiful, and able to universally benefit all enlightening beings, enabling them to attain the light of knowledge. This is the fourth characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. Also, the ocean has four jewels of blazing light spread on its floor, which by nature are extremely, fiercely hot, they are able to drink up and shrink the immeasurable quantities of water poured in by all the rivers, so that the ocean neither increases nor decreases. What are these four? One is called Solar Matrix, the second is called Removing Moisture, the third is called Flame Light, the fourth is called Thorough Exhaustion. If Wu these four jewels were not in the ocean, the whole world, up to the highest heaven of material existence, would all be flooded. The light of this great jewel solar matrix, when it shines on seawater, turns it to milk, the light of the great jewel removing moisture, when it shines on the milk, turns it to cream, the light of the great jewel flame light, when it shines on the cream, turns it to butter, the light of the great jewel thorough exhaustion, when it shines on the butter, turns it to ghee, blazing like fire, consuming it without remainder. Buddha's ocean of great knowledge similarly has four kinds of jewels of great knowledge, with light of immeasurable power, when the light of these jewels of knowledge touches enlightening beings, it ultimately causes them to attain the great knowledge of Buddha. What are the four? They are the jewel of great knowledge stopping all the waves of scattered goodness, the jewel of great knowledge eliminating all emotional attachment to the teachings, the jewel of great knowledge of the universal illumination of the light of intelligence, the jewel of great knowledge of boundless effortlessness equal to Buddha. When enlightening beings practice the methods of fostering enlightenment, they rouse innumerable waves of scattered goodness, which all worldly beings, celestials, humans, or titans cannot destroy, when Buddha touches those. Enlightening beings with the light of the jewel of great knowledge of stopping all the waves of scattered good, it causes them to leave behind the waves of scattered good, keep their minds on one point, and dwell in concentration. Then, touching the enlightening beings with the light of the jewel of great knowledge, 
removing all emotional attachment to the teachings, causes them to give up clinging to the taste of concentration and awaken great spiritual powers. Then, touching the enlightening beings with the light of the jewel of great knowledge of the universal intelligence causes them to relinquish the occult powers they exercise and to engage in the active employment of great science. Then, touching the enlightening beings with the light of the jewel of great Knowledge of boundless effortlessness equal to Buddha causes them to relinquish the active exercise of great science they have been engaged in so that they finally reach the equanimity of Buddhas and cease all effort completely. Without the contact of the great light of these four jewels of knowledge of Buddha it would be impossible for a single enlightening being to attain Buddhahood. This is the fifth characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. The million lands from the sphere of water up to the heaven of neither perception nor non-perception, the abodes of sentient beings in the realm of desire, the realm of form, and the formless realm, all arise from space and rest in space. Why? Because space is everywhere. But though space contains all the realms of desire, form, and formlessness, yet it has no discrimination. The knowledge of Buddha is also like this, the knowledge of listeners, the knowledge of individual illuminates, the knowledge of enlightening beings, the knowledge of formulated practices, and the knowledge of unformulated practices, all arise from the knowledge of Buddha and rest in the knowledge of Buddha, because the knowledge of Buddha pervades all, though it contains innumerable knowledges, it has no discrimination. This is the sixth characteristic of the knowledge of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. Atop the snowy mountains there is an excellent medicinal tree called inexhaustible roots, the roots of that medicinal tree grow from, leagues, all the way down to the adamantine ground and the sphere of water. When that medicinal tree grows roots, it causes the roots of all trees on the continent to grow, when the medicinal tree grows a stem, it causes the stems of all trees on the continent to grow. The same is true of the branches, leaves, flowers, and fruits. The roots of the medicinal tree can grow stems, and the stems can grow roots, the roots are inexhaustible, so it is called inexhaustible roots. That medicinal tree can foster growth everywhere, except for two places where it cannot perform the beneficial action of promotion. Of growth, that is, in the pits of hells and in the sphere of water, yet it has no aversion to them. The great tree of the supreme medicine of the knowledge of Buddha, Likewise, by past development, fully perfects all good qualities of knowledge, shades all realms of sentient beings, and destroys all the miseries of bad states. Universal compassion and commitment form its roots, it is born from the seed of true knowledge of all Buddhas. It is steadfast and immovable, skill in means is its trunk, the transcendent perfections of cosmic knowledge are its branches, meditations, liberations, and the great concentrations are its leaves mental command, intellectual skills and the elements of enlightenment are its flowers, and the ultimate unchanging liberation of Buddhas is its fruit. Why may the medicinal tree of knowledge of Buddha be called inexhaustible roots? Because of ultimately never ceasing, because of not stopping enlightening activity. The practice of enlightening beings is the nature of Buddha, the nature of Buddha is the practice of enlightening beings. Therefore it can be called inexhaustible roots. When the roots of the medicinal tree of Buddha knowledge grow, it causes enlightening beings to grow the root of great love and compassion, which does not abandon sentient beings. When its trunk grows, it causes all sentient beings to grow the trunk of profound determination with steadfast vigor. When its branches grow, it causes all enlightening beings to grow the branches of all transcendent ways. When its leaves grow, it causes enlightening beings to grow the leaves of pure conduct, austerity, virtue, paucity of desire, and contentment. When its flowers grow, it causes all enlightening beings to be replete with the flowers of magnificent arrays of the marks and embellishments of virtues. When its fruit grows, it causes all enlightening beings to gain the fruits of acceptance of non-origination up to acceptance of coronation by all Buddhas. The supreme medicine tree of knowledge of Buddha cannot perform its beneficial growth fostering function in two places only, in those in the two vehicles of individual salvation who have fallen into the abyss of non-doing, 
and in unsuitable sentient beings with rotten roots of goodness who are sunk in the flood waters of erroneous views and craving, yet Buddha never has rejected these people. The knowledge of Buddha has no increase or decrease, because its roots are stable and grow ceaselessly. This is the seventh characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. When the Ionic Holocaust starts in the universe, it burns up all the plants and trees, and even the mountains, consuming all without leaving anything. Suppose someone picked up some dry straw and threw it in that fire, do you think it could do aught but burn? No. It is more possible for that straw not to burn than for Buddha's knowledge, analyzing all sentient beings, all lands, all ages, and all phenomena of all times, not to know something. Why? Because that knowledge impartially comprehends all clearly. This is the eighth characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. When a gale destroys the worlds, a great wind called destruction arises, able to pulverize the billion worlds of the universe, their iron mountains and so on, to smithereens. There is another wind, called blocker, circling the billion world universe, blocking the gale of destruction so that it cannot reach the worlds in other places. Without this blocking wind, all the worlds in the ten directions would be completely destroyed. Buddha similarly has a great wind of knowledge, called extinguisher, which can extinguish the afflictions and habit energies of all great enlightening beings, and a great wind of knowledge called skillful sustaining, which skillfully sustains the enlightening beings whose faculties are not yet mature, not letting the extinguishing whirlwind totally eliminate all their afflictions and habit energies. Without Buddha's skillfully sustaining wind of knowledge, countless enlightening beings would fall into the states of those content with individual salvation. By this knowledge enlightening beings are enabled to transcend the stages of the two lesser vehicles of individual salvation and abide in the ultimate rank of Buddha. This is the ninth characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. There is nowhere the knowledge of Buddha does not reach. Why? There is not a single sentient being who is not fully endowed with the knowledge of Buddha, it is just that because of deluded notions, erroneous thinking, and attachments, they are unable to realize it. If they would get rid of deluded notions, then universal knowledge, spontaneous knowledge, and unobstructed knowledge would become manifest. It is as if there were a great scripture, equal in extent to a billion world universe, in which are written all the things of the universe, there are written the things of the iron peripheral mountains, to an extent equal to those mountains, there are written the things on the land, to an extent equal to the land, there are written the things in the million. World Woe Galaxies, to an extent equal to the galaxies, there are written the things in the thousand world systems, to an extent equal to the systems, there are written the things in the continents, to an extent equal to the continents, and so on, the things of the oceans, the polar mountains, the abodes of earth and sky, the celestial abodes in the sky of the desire realm, the abodes in the form realm, the abodes in the formless realm, are each written down to an equivalent extent. Though this scripture is equal in measure to a billion world universe, yet it entirely rests in a single atom, and as this is so of one atom, it is also true of all atoms. Then suppose someone with clear and comprehensive knowledge, who has fully developed the celestial. I, sees these scriptures inside atoms, not benefiting sentient beings in the least, and, with this thought, I should, by energetic power, break open those atoms and release those scriptures so that they can benefit all sentient beings, then employs appropriate means to break open the atoms and release the great scriptures, to enable all sentient beings to benefit greatly. Similarly, the knowledge of Buddha, infinite and unobstructed, universally able to benefit all, is fully inherent in the bodies of sentient beings, but the ignorant, because of clinging to deluded notions, do not know of it, are not aware of it, and so do not benefit from it. Then the Buddha, with the unimpeded, pure, clear eye of knowledge, observes all sentient beings in the cosmos and says, how strange, how is it that these sentient beings have the knowledge of Buddha but in their folly and confusion do not know it or perceive it? 
I should teach them the way of sages and cause them forever to shed deluded notions and attachments, so they can see in their own bodies the vast knowledge of Buddhas, no different from the Buddhas. Then Buddha teaches them to practice the way of sages, so they get rid of deluded notions, after which they realize the infinite knowledge of Buddha and aid and comfort all living beings. This is the tenth characteristic of the mind of Buddha, great enlightening beings should know it thus. Great enlightening beings should know the mind of Buddha, who has realized thusness and is completely awake, in terms of such infinite, unimpeded, inconceivably great characteristics. Then the great enlightening being universally good, in order to explain again what he meant. Spoke in verse. If you want to know the mind of Buddhas, observe the Buddha's knowledge. Buddha's knowledge has no resting place. Just as space rests on nothing. Sentient beings various inclinations. And knowledge of expedience. All rest on Buddha's knowledge, while. Buddha's knowledge rests on nothing. The liberations of Buddha's disciples and the. Self-enlightened all depend on the reality realm, while reality has no increase or decrease. Buddha's knowledge, similarly produces all knowledges, without increase or decrease, without beginning or end. Just as water flows under the ground, so those who seek it find it, without thought, without end. Its effective power all pervasive. Buddha knowledge is also like this. Being in all creatures' minds, if any work on it with diligence, they will soon find the light of knowledge. Just as the water spirit has four jewels which produce all gems hidden in a secret place where ordinary people cannot see. So too do Buddha's four knowledges produce all knowledge, while no one can see them except great enlightening beings. As in the ocean are four jewels, which can drink up all waters so that the ocean does not overflow and does not increase or decrease. Likewise does Buddha's knowledge stop waves and remove attachment to teachings boundlessly great and vast it produces enlightening beings and buddhas from the nadir to the summit of being the desire form and formless realms all rest in space while space does not discriminate the knowledge of enlightening beings of disciples and the self-enlightened all rest in the knowledge of buddha while buddha knowledge has no discrimination on the snowy mountains is a medicine called inexhaustible roots, which can make all trees grow. Their roots, trunks, leaves, flowers, and fruits. Buddha's knowledge too is like this. Grown from the seed of enlightenment. Once enlightenment is attained, it also produces the practices of enlightening beings. If someone puts a handful of straw in the ionic fire, where even diamond blazes, the straw could not but be burned, the ages and lands of all times and the sentient beings therein Buddha completely knows more surely than the burning of that straw. There is a wind called destruction which can pulverize a universe, if not stopped by another wind, destruction would reach infinite worlds. The great wind of knowledge is also like this, extinguishing the delusions of enlightening beings. There is another wind of skillfulness, enabling them to live in the land of Buddhahood. It is as there is a great scripture equal in extent to a universe existing inside one atom, and in all atoms as well, someone with intelligence and wisdom sees all clearly with pure eyes and breaks the atoms, releasing the scriptures for the benefit of all beings. But knowledge, likewise, is in all beings. Minds, wrapped up in deluded thoughts. They are unaware, unknowing, the Buddha's great compassion causes them to get rid of deluded ideas so knowledge can appear and benefit enlightening beings. Continued, D.